It's actually the end of the day, and I'm here with Jem. Let me just pull the viewer out so I can see who I'm talking to. Uh, we've brewed today, and we've cast the remaining beer out of tank number three. So we've done a full batch of vacant to replace the batch of vacant that we've taken out the fermenters this morning. And uh, in the process, I finished off the cold rooms. So all these cold rooms now, have fully functioning cooling uh, fins in there with the car radiator fan running on 12 volts all being controlled by an STC 1000 up here in our little control box check that out so that's conditioning room number four and at the minute it's sitting at 12.3 12.4 degrees it was down it was down at uh, 10. It was down at 10 to 11 before uh, because I've got them set at 11 degrees. Just kick this bucket out of the way. So I thought before we packed them up and uh, closed the doors, I'd give you one last run over at exactly what we've done. Uh, let me take you off the tripod to do that and we'll go in. So, conditioning room number four, two and three are twinned and then number one um, all seem to be working seamlessly and they've all got their independent control panels which are wired in up there ready to go and they all communicate they talk to each other so if all of them are off then there we go that one's just turned on if all of them are off then the recirculation pump in the glycol bath turns off it's operating at 11 degrees over there without any glycol in the tank so we can go colder if needs be there's no glycol in the reservoir on the bottom no glycol in the reservoir at the top and we've set it to one degree down there we've got the 12 volt power supply he's sat here he's handling this well I've tested it it's drawing 1.4 amps on 240 I don't know what that equates to on the output but the cable that's supplying the fans is warm but uh, not increasingly it's it's just warm to the touch if you know what I mean so that might not be heavy enough it is running three fans after all at 12 volts so the ampage is quite high so that cable runs across all the way around here to conditioning room number one control panel we got the on and off switch for the fan I did buy some rear stats but I don't think I need them I've actually turned the voltage up to 12 volts 12 and a half and they all seem to be running quite fine it's it's not really blowing listen it's not really blowing its head off um, yeah, so the cable comes in there anyway, as I was saying. Uh, here's the supply for the 12 volts, and then it jumps back out. Everything's all in series. It comes across to here as well, and then across to number four. Inside the cold room, we need to insulate the pipework at the back. At the moment, there doesn't seem to be any condensation forming on the cooling panels but I imagine when we use glycol and we drop the temperature in the glycol bath a little bit we will have to use some type of condensation drip tray that's not a problem though it doesn't look like it's going to fill up very quickly even if we do put one in there so what I'm tasked with doing now is pulling all the beer out sweeping uh, all my mess out of the chambers and then restacking the beer that we've taken out today as well make sure that's at the back so we've got proper stock rotation with it and uh, then putting everything back in and writing on the chalkboards 
exactly what's in each tank, uh, in each cold room, or conditioning room, as we've now called them. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we're going to come back in a moment, and we're going to talk about the beer that we're going to be brewing tomorrow. It's going to be Harrison's Brewery Stout, which is a version of the indolent philosopher that we brewed at uh, IVB, but the alcohol content is reduced drastically down to 4.3 instead of 5.3 um, but the basics are pretty much the same so stick around I'm going to talk to you about the recipe for this beer and then if you go across to the patreon page there'll be a beer smith and a PDF file there for you to have a look at and maybe brew brew yourself if you're so inclined so much faster than I'm just going to hit the start button and we'll see how quickly they come down in temperature. So 12.1, 12.7, 13.4, they're the three uh, temps that we've got. So turn the fans back on and fingers crossed the temp should start to dip. So I'm going to go and get the recipe for you guys and we'll talk about the stout before we sign off for the day. Right, we've got the recipe. Uh, I've literally just been upstairs to print this and I've come down and two of the cold rooms have turned off. They're at 10 degrees. I mean, the speed. 10.7, 11.1, 10.7. That'll turn off any second. I'm really chuffed with them actually. So when we get the glycol in, they should even be, they should be even more efficient. Right, Harrison's Brewery Stout. So, let's have a look in the mash tun because this is where the magic really happens with this particular beer recipe. So, underneath all of these grains is a bunch of extra pale malt. I use extra pale malt in the brewery, but pale malt will do. It's because it helps me keep the blonde ales light. And it's pretty much just as good as pale malt for me, so uh, that's what I always buy in, by the ton pre-crushed. All my grains are pre-crushed unless I'm going to sit on them for a while and then I'll buy the whole uh, the whole husk grain and uh, crush it myself with the little roller that I've got over there but I very rarely use that to be quite honest. So let's have a look in here and determine what exactly we've got. So like I said underneath all this there's a bed of 63 kilograms of extra pale malt that makes up 68% of the grain bill. And then we've got flaked barley. So the flaked barley, or torrified barley, as uh, some people may call it, makes up 14% of the beer, and this helps create the body of the stout. It really helps define that mouthfeel. It's very important, I think, for this to go into to any stout recipe and it helps hold the head which of course everybody knows that a stout should have a really thick creamy head on it and then something else that we also add to help the body but it also adds a bit of astringency believe it or not which can be a good thing in a dry Irish stout and that's the style that the Harrison's Brewery stout is here to uh, emulate and that is uh, oats we use malted oats, so these have obviously been germinated and been through a malting process. And again, uh, this does add to the body, but it also brings a little bit of uh, a slight, well, I call it an astringency, it's probably the wrong word, but uh, it gives it like a, a sharp bite to it, a little bit like using rye. And then over here, the next uh, largest 
uh, by quantity ingredient. Oh, the oats, by the way, make up 8% of the grain bill, 8.5%. Then over here, we've got, um, let me just have a look, black malt. Now the black malt makes up 6.3% of the grain bill and this is responsible for the colour. This is mainly the colour. It does contribute some coffee and some chocolate to it as well, but not as much as the other two ingredients that we put in. So the black malt, as I say, is 6.3% of the grain bill. And then in equal quantities, we have roasted barley. Now the roasted barley, again, adds chocolate flavours. It adds uh, some astringency. It adds some coffee notes. It adds a little bit of uh, raisiny kind of uh, flavours as well. And uh, I use the roasted barley uh, as 1.4% of the grain bill in conjunction with, and I think this is the best malt of all, the chocolate malt. So this is the normal chocolate malt. You can get light chocolate malt. This again is 1.4% of the grain bill. And despite its name, this chocolate malt adds tons of coffee to the beer. So you don't really need to uh, to cold steep coffee to get coffee notes in a beer. It can be done, of course, just with the grain bill. And then, of course, all of this grain is going to give us one heck of a multi backbone for the beer. So we need something to balance that out. And what better than a good, solid English hop challenger. Uh, in the whole batch, we put 880 grams of challenger pellet at 7.3% alpha. At the minute, I've got 2016 challenger in stock. So that's what we'll be using. And I'm aiming for between 34 to 38 IBUs. So we've got... Um, in this particular batch, we're, we're targeting 38 IBUs. The colour's coming out at about 51 EBC. Um, and our target gravity is 1042. So we're looking for a 4.3% stout when we're finished. And we're going to finish, hopefully, at about 1011. And that should be dry enough for us. Any drier, and it's going to be... Uh, a little bit astringent with all these dark malts in there. So I also um, put some water additions in the beer as well. Let me just grab the water addition sheet. So I play around a little bit with the uh, sulfite to chloride ratio, but essentially if you get a water report done from Murphy's, you shouldn't go far wrong. Uh, so in this particular batch, we're gonna be adding 184 grams of calcium chloride, and 92 grams of calcium sulfate and my target water profile is doubling so uh, you will obviously won't be treating the water the same way that I have but if you know what your water profiles are then use doubling as your target water profile and you shouldn't go far wrong we very we really don't have to put very much uh, water treatment into uh, our water here because it's really suitable for uh, bitters and um, pails so all of our water additions are pretty small uh, it's only me playing around just to try and get a little bit more of that chocolatey note out of it so that's why I tw tweak the uh, chloride to sulfate ratio a little bit talk to me by none other than Mr Tony Yates you should go and check out his channel I've not seen a video for a while if I'm honest I'm sure you're watching Tony. Cheers bud. Right, well, that's it. Here's a sneak peek at the uh, production record for the brewery. So that's got everything in there that we're going to be doing for this. Ignore this, I've edited this little bit down here. That's the money shot right there. Uh, the challenge is obviously in for 60 minutes and we're fermenting on Nottingham Ale. And then here is the beer smith recipe as well so you can pause it punch it in yourself if you like but fail that guys shoot across to my patreon page the link is directly below this video and uh, if you're kind enough to support the channel by just a dollar or two a month then all the recipes on there are available on PDF and uh,
BSMX file, I think that's correct. Basically a Beersmith file. So if you don't use Beersmith, then of course you can uh, you can just grab all of the PDF and copy things down manually. Right, that's it. I'm going to rack off for the day. All three cold rooms are sat at temperature. You'll be pleased to know. We've got the conditioning room sat at, set for 11 degrees, and there's a two degree buffer, so they can go up to 13 before the heating or cooling element kicks back on again. It just prevents the compressor cycling all the time. And that noise that you can hear in the background is of course the, uh, the glycol chiller for the fermenters behind here. There she is. Because of course we've just put, we've just put a new vacant into FV2 if I can point the camera in the right direction. Right, there we go. I'm tired, my arms are tired. I'm running out of things to say. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll be back tomorrow where we actually brew this stout and I'll try and get as much of it on film for you as possible. So if you've got the recipe, then at least you're gonna have a brew day to reference all of that to. And I'll talk a little bit more about it then. See you tomorrow, cheers. Oh, 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 o